If you've used Apple Loops here in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad, you're probably aware of the looping and the follow tempo and pitch options. But what exactly does follow tempo and pitch do? And why would you ever turn it off? Well, in this GarageBand quick tip, I'm gonna show you. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. Now, when you're using Apple Loops here in GarageBand, what you'll notice is that when you tap and drag a loop over to your project and release it like this, it does a couple of things. If we tap on this and tap again and go to settings, it will automatically loop, which we've covered in another video, and I've linked that one up above and down below, all about Apple Loops and looping. But the other thing it does is it follow tempo and pitch is turned on. So what does this do, and why would you ever turn it off let's jump in and take a look now so in this project if I go to my settings here you can see the tempo is quite quick it's at 160 BPM and if we play this along with the rest of the loops it sounds like this And you can hear there that the hi-hat that I've just added is perfectly in sync. It lines it up on the grid because what it does is it will change both the tempo and in the case of a melodic sample, it'll actually change the actual key that it's in as well. So that is good in most situations. You want this to line up. Let's just tap it and go to settings and turn it off just so that we can see what it does without that on. Let's play it now. So you can hear it's at a very different speed, and if we take this out of solo, let's take a listen. So if you were going to use this, you wouldn't use this loop in that way. You would make sure that this loop was actually on follow tempo and pitch so that it does actually line up with the rest of your song. So why on earth would you ever want it off? Well, let's take a look at another example where you may want to turn off follow tempo and pitch. Now for this example, we're gonna go back into our Apple Loops, but this time we're gonna search for a riser. Now risers are used in beat-driven and electronic music so that we can actually get a bit of a transition between one part and another. So let's scroll down here and let's just audition one of these risers by tapping on it. Oh, that's a bit intense, how about this one? Yeah, I like that one, that's gonna be a good riser. So let's tap and drag this into our project now. We need to come down here to a blank track and we want it to be in this transition point. So we'll drop it in there. So by default, it has looped this. Now this is the first thing I wanted to show is that with a riser or what we call a one-shot sample, so something like just a crash or a riser or something, we don't actually want it to loop as the cops come for me now. We're gonna to go to settings here, we're gonna turn off looping and we're just gonna have that one sample there so now if we put this right in the spot where we want it so let's just pop it around about here where we have our transition point and let's play back these couple of bars So that is very cool, yeah. So that is fine, it all works fine and dandy, but what if we wanted to actually change the length of this, if you want it to be slower or faster? Well, then we can jump into settings here. We can turn off follow tempo and pitch, and now this opens up this speed setting here. So by default, it goes back to its default speed here, which is slightly longer. So we'd want to adjust that. So this will give us a longer rising sound between this transition. Let's take a listen. So there you go, we can do that. And then again, we can go into settings if we want it to be really fast. We can go anywhere up to one, two times or four times, or we can make it super slow down to a quarter time and it will stretch out or compress that sound based on what we actually select there. So let's bring it back there to one time and you can see that, yeah, there it is. So that is where you would use the follow tempo and pitch is when you're using loop-based sequences, when you've got things where you wanna make sure they light up on the grid. If you're using a one-shot sample like this riser, then sometimes you want to not line it up on the grid you may want to turn off follow tempo and pitch and there you go i hope this helps you out if you're using apple loops in your next project now if you want to learn a heap more about apple loops there are two videos linked down below right now you can also subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the studio live today icon in the top right and go to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness